Hi guys, so today we're going to be discussing the solution to Physics Cup 2020 problem 5. So first of all, I'm going to just read through the problem just to make sure that we're on the same track. So we have two, two ellipses that are, that are depicted in the figure below. So you can see that one figure, one, one ellipse is labeled by D, the other ellipse is labeled by C, right? And we, they are giving us that, and it's available as a GeoGebra file, so I have it, I have it there. So we want to look at that, and they represent real images of circles. So that that's created by a thin ideal lens. So there are two real circles, and these two real circles are going to be uh, reflected through a lens, and they'll output these ellipses. So I guess. Uh, for a purpose, we can just say something. Uh, we will we'll create two circles. So here's one circle, and I'll make another circle right here. Alright. So and these these two circles, like when we when we uh, reflect them through a lens, so we can I don't know we can give some arbitrary lens like this. Then they'll create ellipses because each point will be uh, refracted through light rays and they'll uh, be oblique, ob right? Yeah, oblique is the right word. And yeah, this will be something that we're going to look at later. And we, they want us to reconstruct the position of the lens. So that is interesting. And I will tell you a bit why, but just read through the entire problem. And they're saying that we can use any construction steps that QGM has to offer. So yada yada yada. And they don't want any trial and error approach. So um, uh, you may print the ellipses on a sheet of paper. We're, we're not going to do that because you obviously have the QGM profile. And Oh, he says, be aware that there may not be any solution if you start with arbitrarily positioned two ellipses of arbitrary shape. So, wh why he's saying that is that I believe if you if you move this, no oh crap. If you move uh, the center such that it's no longer on the, so that the center is no longer inside the bigger center, then the you're not going to be able to construct a lens because it's not going to output the same type of um, it's, not, it's not going to happen so i think the main thing is that we need the lens to be inside so that's why he's saying that and they want so yeah that's essentially the gist of the problem they want us to they have two ellipses and they want us to reconstruct the lens through QM geometry and compass uh, ruler techniques so why is going about to say why they why constructing a lens is um, pretty interesting is because if you go back to uh, physics Club 2017 uh, let's look at the problem so the problem here says ellipse specific uh, it's the same thing so we have on the ellipse and there's a real image of the circle so this is the actual circle so it's gonna be a circle like this, and that's it becomes oblique by the lips, and then they want us to reconstruct the position of the lens. So the main thing that I think we should do is find the centers of the actual two ellipses first, and with that we essentially are just gonna do what Physics Cup 24, 2017 Problem Four did. So how are we gonna do that? First of all, let's go to this one. I think a really interesting part is that if you look at the if you look at the circles first, you can get a lot of an idea of this problem. So I'm gonna I wonder uh, first first note that if you draw two two tangent lines, since the circle is symmetric, uh, the intersections of these two tangent lines will go through with the cent both centers of the circle. So let me show you. Let me draw that. So there's a tangent point. I mean, we, we can define the points of intersection here to be C and D. 
Oh, okay. Let me move that like that. Alright, that's good. So, I'm gonna draw the tangents. Oh, okay. Oh, that is not what I wanted. But yeah. I'm just going to construct this tangent and then okay that is kind of weird I don't know why. so okay now 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 we constructed these two tangent lines to both of the surfaces so what I'm going to do is that I am going to say this point and this point so Ian E and F, and uh, we're going to draw a line through both of these. So, as as seen, as seen, uh, E and F is going to uh, produce a line that passes through both of these segments, and I will remove the tangents. So, yes, and also remove E and F. So, this is pretty cool. Now we got a line that's passing through both of the centers. We can also define. So, if you if you have this, this is pretty cool. So we're going to, we can use the same thing in the ellipse example. So, I'll show you here. So we have these two ellipses. And this is from the original physical problem. I simply created the bigger ellipse to have a blue color and the red ellipse to have the same color. So we can, uh, of course, define points G and H to be intersections of the ellipse D and ellipse C. And now we can draw the tangents like this. And we can draw a line that passes through. And this line first note that doesn't go through the, both of the focuses so we know that it isn't going to be the geometric center of the ellipse but it's going to be a, a little um changed so, but on this line on this line right here uh, it's called line j uh this will be where both of the centers of ellipse pass through so that's a, that's the first step to solving this problem so now we have a line that both pass through but we probably need to have another one to actually uh, constrain the point at where the ellipse actually ellipse center or circle center exists so consider back to this circle example uh, we can construct two points uh, oops uh, construct two points like this right and the first note is that if we make a segment so a segment CG and HC by Thales theorem, this is going to be a right triangle. And if we uh, go past this, so if we create a line, then uh, in a line through this, and then the intersection of these two lines, they're going to be diametrically opposite to each other, and they're going to be passing through the circle. So. This is this is a cool like this is something cool you might notice. So why? Well, by Thales theorem, we know that this, this is going to be a 90 degree triangle. So it's going to be outputting at 90 degrees as well, and this is going to be moving downwards 90 degrees. So they're going to be intersecting at two solutions of that are of the circle that are diametrically opposite. And you can also prove this by actual geometry by creating some angle chasing. Uh, measures but I guess that would be more of a proof for you guys because it's pretty trivial it's not uh, worth talking about in this video so this is what we're going to use in our problem so define K and L to be the endpoints of the ellipse and we can create these two segments and line L is going to pass through G and L and line M is going to pass through K and G. So then we can define points M and N to be the inter 
intersections of these two or oh, not that in this in this diagram I didn't put n to be exactly on there in, which is my fault so it's not actually the exact um, lens position is going to be a little bit different but it's not that much of a big deal as such that you need to restart everything so then again uh, we have this these two intersections we have this point right here this point will be the point of the bigger circle and we're going to name this by point O so this is the first step of the problem now all you have to do is construct the center of the ellipse by knowing the center of this big ellipse or the center of the circle that's in the ellipse so it's essentially dilated down to physics cup 2017 so what you can do first is that um i will get rid of this stuff uh, and then we can also get rid of this line so now you have all the points and that's all you need so we can consider two lines that are passing through the center so we can do lines p and lines on so lines line p will go through g and o and the output of intersection point p and similarly we can do a line q so they will go through h and o um, have an intersection point q so these two point lines are passing through the center of the circle and they're going to output a quadrilateral so the quadrilateral So we can, um, so we can create the points uh, T and A. So this is going to be a quadrilateral. And in the original original um, circle thing, this is going to be a rectangle actually. So it's going to be inscribed rectangle. So I guess we can show what it would look like. It would look like something like this. So. In the rectangle, all the points are going to be parallel to each other. So this is what it looks like. You can make it a polygon, I guess. So this, this is like not exact, but like for, for the purpose of the problem, this is good enough. So this is what the rectangle would look like. And in the ellipse example, it's going to look like this. It's going to be the quadrilateral. So if we now extend both of these points, so extend both of these points, so lines G, Q, and we're going to extend lines H, P, they're going to intersect at some point over here. And this is what we're going to call point R. Similarly, we can also extend points uh, Q, P, and uh, points G, H. And then we're going to intersect all the way over here, and this is going to be point S. So if you can zoom out, what, what does it tell us? So in the original example, if we to, if we were to extend both of these, this would be parallel, and they never intersect. So the point, the reason why these are intersecting is because this will be the location of the focal point where everything focuses in together. So the focal point is going to pass through. R and S, and yeah, I, so uh, where did it go? Uh, so this is going to be the focal point, the focal plane. So the center of the lens, the center of the lens now is going to be located on a semicircle of the diameter R and S. And why this is true is because the the lens has to be at a point that's perpendicular to the focal plane. And that's also so if you, if you consider the center of the lens to be some point which we'll call O for now. Well, o is already here, but let, let's just say for now the center of this lens is going to be point O. Then we need RO and RS to be perpendicular 
to the formal plane. So it's going to be on a semicircle, and there will be some lines that's located on this. So how can you how can you find the center of this? Well, we can just do the same thing. The points here that we picked are actually pretty arbitrary. It doesn't have to be the intersections of G and H. So you can pick some point here and here. For, for, I'll just do this for the sake of it. And then we can once again just draw the lines of the intersection. And we'll get another quadrilateral and the, you know, they will intersect at, this, at some point. And we can create the same semicircle. And these two semicircles will have to intersect at the point of the lens, otherwise it would not be the physics of the problem. So I can create another semicircle right here, and we have two of them, like this. So I didn't label this properly, but this will be point B1 for now, and point B1 will be the center of the lens. And the lens center will have to be parallel to the focal plane. So with that, we have essentially constructed the focal or the lens location, and that's going to be the center of the lens. And once again, this is not going to be exact because we made a little mistake in the initial part of the problem, but for the but is the constructions are correct. So that about ends the problem, and of course, if you feel free to create the actual circles that are created from this. I will link my GeoGebra of GeoGebra working onto uh, this YouTube video and you can feel free to extract it and work on it and work on some random stuff yourself. But as for our remarks of the problem, um, compared to the other problems here, it was pretty nice. Uh, just because First of all, I like uh, geometric optics, especially ones where you have to construct it off. But there are also a lot of nice problems in physics club. So, and the fact that it's also very close to problem 2017 makes it a bit less interesting, I guess. So it's an interesting problem if you haven't seen it, but it is less interesting if you have. And for the problem like this, I guess it's become less physics related and become more math related. So if I was to rate my entire enjoyment of the problem, I would say it's uh, pretty good. But in physics related way, not that much. If that is the right way to say it. But still is a problem worth trying out. So yeah. That about ends the video, and see you guys next time.